Hi, I'm Dr. Joseph Leeson from UCSD and Rady Children's Institute for Genomic Medicine. I'm excited to tell you about our new publication in Nature Biotechnology, Control Independent Mosaic Single Nucleotide Variant Detection with Deep Mosaic, and introduce you to our two authors, Xiao Xu Yang and Xin Xu. Mosaicism arises from spontaneous mutations that are inherited by different cell populations in the body. In this example, after the sperm and egg meet, a single cell zygote is created that divides subsequently and a mutation occurring early in embryogenesis, like at the four cell stage seen here in red, will be inherited by all the daughter cells and will spread to many parts of the body. The person will be mosaic for the two types of cells. A new mutation happens every time a cell divides, and so we are really all mosaics for many individual mutations, some arising during embryonic development, some during childhood, and some during aging. And the result is different cell populations with different genomes within an individual, a phenomenon that is termed genomic mosaicism. Our computer program that we describe here helps to identify these mosaic mutations by training the computer to spot them much better than a human can using genomic sequencing data from different cell types in the body. Mosaic mutations are both recorders of normal biological processes and can cause disease. These mutations can arise during embryogenesis, adulthood, old age, and they can have either effects on the individual or cumulative effects on the population. In the middle, we can see the effects of healthy somatic mosaicism variants that are acquired throughout life. They are inherited by the daughter cells, indicated by these branching figures, and they spread throughout the body, but they don't shift the phenotype, and there's no change in behavior, so they're inconsequential to the person. But other mutations, like these here at the bottom in red, whether they happen early during the four cell stage, as example, or later, they're inherited by all the daughters, and they adversely impact cellular function and shift the distribution so that those patients are more likely to have diseases such as epilepsy or other sorts of conditions depending upon where the mutated cells reside. These mosaic mutations appear as a small percent of the genomic reads within a file here in red compared with the control reads here in blue that come from the healthy cells. And one way clinicians and researchers found useful to spot these is to manually stare at the raw genomic sequencing data like you see here to classify these as either true positives or false positives, which can sometimes be artifact. And the trick is really separating mosaic mutations from inherited mutations or sequencing noise, which has been a huge challenge. And you can imagine we are looking here at one single base, but there's three billion bases across the genome. So we figured that a computer could be trained to far surpass humans in the ability to discriminate between true and false positives. Hello, I'm Dr. Xiao Xu Yang, first and co-corresponding author for this work. While detecting the mosaic mutations are extremely challenging in the whole genome, complex statistical and machine learning models are used to classify those mutations. Some existing models are built for cancer. Some are trained on highly extracted features from the original data. Thus, it's sometimes hard for them to pick up some artifacts and will produce false positive results. To automate the human classification, we seek help from deep learning methods, especially the deep convolutional neural networks. Invented as early as the 1970s, the neural networks are built to mimic human visual processing. After the computers are trained to do the classification task, they are proved to be exceptionally efficient at picking up information from images and classify them. Shown on the right is an example of a deep learning convolutional neural network that can classify between dogs and cats. We then use similar strategy and made images shown here to represent sequences obtained from each of the candidate variants. We split the information that supports the wild-type genome information and those supporting the mutant genome information. 
and stack them together. To incorporate additional sequencing information from the raw data, we were inspired by the Google Deep variant and used the RGB channels to store information independently. Those information include bases at each given genomic position, colored in red, with candidate variants centralized in the middle. We also recorded the base quality in the green channel and used the blue channel to record the base orientations of each of the reads. After the image representation, variants with different sequencing times and fractions of the mutant alleles can be represented like this. We can also see their distributions are similar to what we found in real data, and those technical artifacts are performing bizarrely at the corner. Hi, I'm Xing Xu, the first author of the Deep Mosaic paper. We generated various simulated and biological data to train and validate the Deep Mosaic model. 180,000 mosaic variants were used for model training. These training sets included both simulated variants and experimentally validated variants from the whole genome sequencing data. Then, for further model selection, benchmarking, and orthogonal testing, we used different sets of independent data to ensure that our model can be generalized for data sets it hasn't encountered before. As you can see from the previous slide, we used not only biological data, but also simulation data to train our models. This is because deep learning model in general would require a large training set to achieve the desired performances. But due to the limited number of variants that were experimentally validated, we added additional simulation data to enlarge our training sets. So in order to ensure that this mixture of data is good for training, we also conducted experiment by training the model with only simulated data, with only biological data, and with a one-to-one -one mixture data and compared their respective performances. This plot demonstrated that the model trained on only simulated datasets performed the worst in terms of accuracy, F1 score, MCC score, and specificity. However, the mixture data shown in the green dots here can train a model that performs as well as, if not even better than, models trained on 100% of biological variants. With this training set, we performed transfer learning and repurposed 10 types of different convolutional neural networks, including the well-known structures like DenseNet, InceptionNet, ResNet, and EfficientNet. This diagram here shows one of our best performing network structure, EfficientNet B4. This model takes in a list of candidate images, and through the convolutional layers, the key features of the pile-up images were extracted. In addition, features from the sequencing experiment and genomic populational data, including expected depth ratio, genomic allele frequency, the annotation from repeat masker and segmentation duplication were also added and fed into the last layer of the fully connected layers of the model to facilitate the classification. In the end, the deep mosaic would classify your candidate variants into mosaic positive and mosaic negative. The positive are the real mosaic variants, and the negative could include homozygous variants, heterozygous variants, and artifacts. With this model, deep mosaic showed high sensitivity and specificity on independent genome and exome data after orthogonal validation experiments. In the end, I want to remind you that Deep Mosaic is not only a tool that you can use directly, but also an open source platform that can enable you to train your own models using the same image based setup for a more customized detection. You can go to our GitHub page for more information about how to use a model and how to train your own models. This brings us to the last page of our presentation. This very cool image that we chose to end our presentation was actually painted by an AI artist from the OpenAI platform. We asked this AI to draw a picture based on the gist of our paper, that an artificial intelligence is detecting mutations in the genome. And this really high-techish image is what we got. 
This image not only showed us how powerful the neural network technology have become nowadays, but also prompted us to think more about how we can take advantage of this technology, apply them in biological and medical areas, and bring potential medical solutions. Thank you all for watching.